Hello. Can you hear me okay? Is it all good? Can you hear me? Yay, good. I'm so glad everyone can hear me. So many people in the chat room already. Hello, May, Beastie Boy, Eve, Dan, Luba, The D, Paolo, Cyan. Have I? Artie Crafty Alchemy. Okay, so while we wait a couple minutes for people to show up, um, I just wanted to give you the background on why we're doing a vote of which one to show and many of you know or some of you may know that um, I suffer from bipolar which basically means I get manic phases and depression phases and like in the last about 10 days or so I've noticed that I seem to be going into a depression phase at the moment and one of the things that's really hard when you are depressed or going into a depression phase is making decisions seriously just I'm really really normally good at making decisions I'm I'm not one of those people that spend ages looking at the menu at a restaurant and not know what to pick I usually know straight away and I just order it but when I'm depressed I find making decisions hard so today I had planned well I came up with two ideas for today's live stream one is this is a box from Crema and um, it's full of pigments and one option is to, okay don't vote yet, um, is to op do an unboxing of this and maybe try making some paints out of this and then the other option is this is the monster palette that I showed you in my monthly haul. Now I could fill this up and maybe colour swatch them if you want that or if you like shout out a paint colour that you want to see me paint with I can do like quick, lots of quick little mini paintings from the colours that are on the palette How does that sound guys? Hi Ian. What's in the mug? Um, I have two. This is just water, and then this is milk, um, soy milk and honey. The one you told me about. Right. So let's take a vote. If you could shout out either unboxing for the unboxing and paint making and palette. For filling the monster palette and then we can take count and see which one you guys prefer to see today don't worry if like the one you wanted to happen today doesn't get voted in because I will just do whichever one doesn't that doesn't get picked today next Thursday no Dan it's not alcohol I'm allergic to alcohol me drinking alcohol on live stream would be a really bad thing. Arty Crafted, do you mean the paint making? In which case you need to write unboxing or palette for the filling of the palette. No, you can't have both, buddy. You have to vote for one or the other. <laughs> So overwhelmingly, I think it's unboxing. Thank you, Eve. Yeah, I think it's unboxing. So this palette will have to wait 
and uh, filling this palette will have to wait till next week. Say bye to the big monster palette! Right, so since you picked unboxing this and my white balance is all over the place, isn't it? Hang on, let me fix that first. Not auto. There we go. Is that better? A little bit too blue, maybe. The world is not this blue. There we go. Right, so this is from... Okay, I'm really, really sorry that the... Um, palette didn't get chosen for those of you who voted palette but don't panic I will fill it next week so you're not missing out on anything it's okay so this is a box I just got from Crema pigments and uh, I ordered a few pigments so It's the leaflet, telling you about this season's leaflet. I've already had one of these from them before. do we have so I have altering blue extra dark and this is Kremer's own rather than the, the uh, historic one that they found at the back of a warehouse um, I don't know how I started off with the rare one and not this so I thought I'd give this a go instead because I don't like using materials that are about to run out or has run out. I get really precious about them and I don't cope very well with preciousness. It, just, it adds a lot of pressure to me. So I have always tried to go for things that are easily sourced and there's like a really good stock of them. Oh Dan, you never got one of these leaflets. It's just the... Um, new ones for 2018 which is ironic because half of these have sold out now this is the that historic ultramarines that they found in marienburg that was like made in the 1970s and then the company went bust and then somebody found a whole load of these pigments in the back of their warehouse how was the historical one? It was okay. I mean, it's nice, but it's not dance. It's not the quality of dance. And um, I just wanted to try how, like, the more modern pigments, because this will be made, like, more recently and hopefully better technology. So I just wanted to see if there were any difference. Ultramarine blues are usually really cheap, so I didn't mind spending a few euros to just give it a go to see if there are any difference. Right, and then I also have Caput Mortar because you know that's my favorite Sennelier color. So I thought I'd give it a go making that one. And this is the, oh, it's all in German, Ultramarine Red. Anyone can read German? What's Altrosa? I think it is red. Might be violet. No, because I have Caput Morton Violet and that actually is like violet. So it must be like red or rose. Then I have the Spinel. 
and then I have the this is the red iron oxide micronized and Eve did warn me that micronized pigments will get everywhere um, yes Ian I, I understand that it's there to be made beautiful art but if it go if it gets in the way of my creative process like a choice of the material is going to get in like in my particular way of my creative process then i am not going to use it okay because we as artists we have to protect our own creative processes and we all have different ones and i just explained that you know that is my creative practice and i really hope that you can respect that please so yeah that is all of the pigments so one two three four five six seven um this is ultramarine dark if i didn't say that yeah i think yeah eve i think you're right they do have different pigments because i once messaged them about their ready-made ultramarine green paint and I got a reply from the America's website saying they only had eight left but like the German stock might be a lot bigger so they they do seem to have lots of different way like range and quantity of stock Okay, so we're going to make paint. Um, let's have a vote on which paint you want me to make first while I just set this all up. So the choices are Ultramarine Dark, Ultramarine Blue Extra Dark, Caput Mortem Ultramarine We Think Red, Caput Mortem Violet, Red Iron Oxide, and Spinel. I'll just get my stuff. I always do this. I set it up and then I remember that I put this down. So I'm going to have to move everything off again. Ha Diane's asking, have I ever mixed pigments? <clears throat> yeah, um, not that I'm nowhere near as um, experienced as Dan and Eve. Uh, like at all I've literally like mixed like three batches so far and that's all been on ultramarine blue and um, I did try mixing ultramarine green but it is a more trickier pigment and what happened was with uh, hi Anthony um <clears throat> yes I am we'll wait for you until you get your espresso what happened was I accidentally bought the last two bags of ultramarine green that Crema had and it was one of their you know the back of the warehouse find um, pigments and I emailed them it's like hey do you have any more and they're like no that literally was the last one we've completely run out like both in America and in Germany so it was like okay so I basically have probably not the last two but one of the last two pigments and it's a pigment that's a little bit more tricky to make 
and I was like, I am a complete novice. It's such a valuable thing that I didn't want to mess it up, like make it into a bad batch of paint. So what I actually have done is split the two bags into three and I've sent some to Eve, some to Dan and some to Ame. Um, so that, oh, I'm way off. So that they, the more experienced paint makers can make it into good paints and um, like let the beautiful paints go out in the world. So that's what happened with the ultramarine blue. How's the vote going? Yeah, I mean, some people really, really enjoy using rare um, paints and pigments. And I think that's really, really awesome. I just can't do it. It's I've tried and it just puts such a silly amount of pressure on myself and I just stop painting. So we all have our demons and I think for me is preciousness. Oh cool, did I make it hers? Cause I, um, I haven't heard from her. I'm glad she got hers. So we have measuring spoons. I usually only use the one tablespoon and the one teaspoon. Oh, pink wins. Thank you. Okay, so this is ultramarine red. Um, could somebody please look up what PR259 is? Yeah, Kara, don't don't worry, girl. I do not force myself to do things that I don't want to. Well, think like I don't force myself to do things that go against how I work. And then this is the binder I'm gonna use. It's the Shimin case one. Doesn't have honey, but it does have ox gall. I find this for me dries a lot quicker than Kramer's one. What do you think so, Dan? Oh, that she's got it. Okay, yeah. Artie says, preciousness is what... It's funny because my boy cat was Artie. He, his name was Artie, so it's really weird when I say, Artie says, um, preciousness is why I have brought Mission Gold to land with instead of using up my precious Daniel Smith. I think, I mean, if neither is right or wrong. You know, if you're into the preciousness, that's awesome. If you're into the, um, the you know, the more abundance one, then that's awesome too. So, yeah, you know what? I need to get some clippets. I'll be right back. I just want to get some clippets before I dared to open these. Okay, so Eve says PR259, which is what this is, is ultramarine old rose or ultramarine pink. And Dan says, this is the great thing about these live streams. You guys know so much more than I do. Um, Dan says ultramarine pink. The only brand I know of having it are M. Graham and Old Holland. Ooh, that's good. Semi-opaque pigment, excellent light fastness. Thank you, Eve. Ellen is copying and pasting stuff from handprint for us and she says the pigment has not been tested by AST ASTM the color appears 
appearance is a light value dull red violet warmer than ultramarine violet red shade the paint will work well in palettes emphasizing earth colors such as raw sienna and Vienna, uh, Vienna Venetian red that's really interesting thank you Ellen <laughs> yes beastie I will show it to you because I have to otherwise I won't be able to move the paint so oh I need to get my mask this is my mask it's not as pretty as Eve's um, what I'm going to do is scoop one tablespoon of this and then um, put the mask on, put this in, mix it about and then take my mask off. So my voice is going to be really muffled for a while. So talk amongst yourselves while I do this bit. Okay, can you hear me? Can you decipher me? It's a lovely color. Paula, what's the composition of the pigment? Yeah, you can hear me. Woo right, so that's that's the ultramarine pink. So if are you saying you can't get ultramarine pink from the US site? Dan says Core has ultramarine pink too, but it's a different pigment. What do they use, Dan? So with this, I uh, no, I'll just do this first. Just need to make this mix this enough so there's no loose powder. Ooh, it's getting darker. I will answer your question in a minute, Dan. I just want to be able to be decipherable. Okay, so, so far, this doesn't go into the binder as easily as the ultramarine blues that I've tried have. Oh, it's a really nice color though. Really nice. Hi, Joanne. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, you two sit here. Oh. Okay, mask off.
Right, so, <clears throat> so far, this didn't mix into the um, binder quite as easily as the ultramarine blues that I've done so far has. And uh, this is just distilled water in a spray bottle. Um, so Dan was asking how do I find this binder? We're not going to make any comments, are we? <laughs> Um, the Schmincke binder has been good. It's not as easy to rewear as Kremers, but Kremers one just takes forever and a half to dry out at all, and it's still sticky and stuff, so I don't know. I love like the rewettability of Kremers ready-made paints, and I assume they're making they're, they're using the same ready-made binder um but to get it to how dry theirs is when you buy them because theirs are bone dry um it would just take months and months yeah valerie i have that um binder this is crema's binder and this one has honey in it you can smell it when you open the bottle it's smells gorgeous of um, honey it's really nice but it does take absolutely ages to dry um, whereas I like paints that dry relatively quickly so that's why I chose Schmincke instead what I might start doing and in fact I've been meaning to ask Dan and Eve on this one um, is can you use any kind of honey or does it have to be one of those clear liquid honey because what i might start doing is use schmincke's binder but then add a little bit of honey which was i think it was heather's idea which is awesome so hey how was your trip to kofu Yeah, the colour is just beautiful. It is so nice. And it's really smooth already. Can you see how smooth it is already? Robin's asking if I know any ready-made mixed binders that does not contain animal product. Um, let's see what's... I don't know what the ingredients for this is. Maybe Eve can look this up. This doesn't have honey. Oh, no. This is definitely not vegan because this has um, ox gall in it. Why don't I mix some of the crown binder? Paolo, you are a genius. Yes, let's do that. The um, crema one is really watering in comparison. Ironically, the one that doesn't have honey is um, a lot more honey-like in texture than the one with honey. So I don't know what's going on there. The Schmincke's one is really thick. And I'll, I've so far had to always, oops, sorry, always add um, water, distilled water to it to make it easier to mold. Whereas Crema's one, I didn't have to. Oh, I'm glad you had a good holiday. To this binder? Honey? I just added some Kremers one. Is that bad, Dan? Uh-oh. Maybe I messed up already.
I am finding paint making incredibly relaxing really really relaxing I started off with like I just want to be able to make my ultramarine my own ultramarine blue because what happened was I was planning a big series using a lot of ultramarine blue um, I made my ultramarine marine blue um, haven't made the series <laughs> I got a bit sidetracked into paint making <laughs> and um it's very addictive it's very expensive addiction so um as a friend i'm warning you if you get into this you're gonna get stuck in it and it's gonna cost you a lot of money so yeah just just be be aware of that oh i can still see a lot of grain so i'm, I'm gonna keep mulling Yes, pal, we'll find out shortly. Um, what kind of varying results, Dan? Please tell me. I know you can make your... Like, Ame does vegan paint and she makes her own from, like, sugar syrups and stuff. Yeah, you don't have to buy your paint anymore, Eve. But then, like, honestly, crema is dangerous. Honestly, I am doing a PSA right now about crema. Um, do not go there unless you are ready to just throw all your money at it. Yes, I have finally fallen down the paint making um, hole. I was totally not intending to. I was like, no, I'll just make the ultramarine blue, learn how to do that, and that'll be it. Nah. <laughs> no. Apparently, pigment world is a very fascinating world. And once you make one colour, you kind of want to start finding out how all the others will turn out. It's weird. I had no intention of making any other paint at all whatsoever. Like when I said it, I was like, I'm when I said I'm not seriously getting into it. I really meant it. I honestly meant it at the time. I totally believed in it myself. Dan says some of the paints didn't dry and was a bit gloopy Ooh, okay we'll find out with this if this is going to dry or not now that i've added some crema binder to it that i should put a lid on yeah this um ellen says i don't know that color makes it seem like a worthwhile investment i agree with you this is gorgeous it is a gorgeous gorgeous color Yeah, there is a huge debate on is bee or is honey okay or not in terms of bee slavery and stuff and you just got to pick your own line uh, this is how i re i really strongly feel about this is we all have to pick our own line of what we're comfortable in whether that's about food or about um art or your art supplies or how we approach our own creative process none of them are wrong right all of them are right for the right person and we have to stop doing this stuff of telling other people 
what to do just because it's exact it's what you're doing like you don't know that other person not that well you know you haven't asked 300 questions about you know what's their their approaches you know why they're so no they don't ask for those things they just go oh you should do this you should do that and i'm like or you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do this and i'm like you know like human rights basically means we get to choose and we need to be able to respect that within reason within reason like if you break the law and stuff then um, that's a whole different kettle of fish but I don't know there's just a lot of people out there that really want to tell everyone else what to do because you know really want to tell everyone that their way is the best and particularly in art I really don't believe in that art I'm sorry I know I'm ranting um, in art the whole point to me about art is the beauty of infinite possibilities and the reason why it is totally valid for me to be an artist and for you to be an artist and for millions of other people to call themselves an artist is because we represent like one of those infinite possibilities and to tell people that they have to create their art your way or do things your way is just entirely limiting like what's possible and what that person can do it just really annoys me that people think they can just tell you what to do when they know nothing about you or like you've stated to them hey this is my philosophy this is why and they're still like oh no you should totally do it my way even though it's completely opposite to what I just told you it's like no you're not listening and I don't want to bother with that right rant over how are you guys doing in the chat rants are good thank you but I won't do it for too long so what I try to do is show you what I do right or show you like with the Daniel Smith color showdown I just show you the result right I just paint the swatch and I'll tell you what I think of those colors and whether like I'm going to use them or not but you don't have to at all you know I think it's awesome that we all have different choices and different opinions and I respect your opinion just don't force it on me just like you can totally take it or leave it you know just like I don't know I try to provide information rather than opinions although this is comp totally ironic because I am saying my opinion about this um, Eve is saying bestie boy had a good question oh I'm sorry I missed your question bestie boy um, how do you know if you have made a good color do you mean like how do I know when it's ready thank you guys for your support and people should not tell each other what to do yeah it just I don't know this week's just been I seem to have there was many instances where that cropped up and I just got tired of it now so I'm just I'm usually a very polite person in like I'm not a very confrontational person but I'm just getting to the point now where this is getting annoying hi Moa Hi Diane, hi Destiny, hi Mary. Right, so I am going to assume that what Bestie Boy asked was how do I know it's ready. The test is, if I can get a piece of paper without dropping everything. Oh, 
Right, so I have a piece of paper. Oh, D I'm really glad you bought some colours because of my um, Dennis Miss Colour Showdown. That's the thing, it's like I show you information and then you can make your own decision as to whether you want to take it or leave it. Destiny's asking, are you making pure pigment colours or are you mixing? I'm only doing pure pigments for now because I've only just started and I don't know what I'm doing with just pure pigments. So I want to get used to pure pigments first and then once I get a good hang of it, I'm going to start doing um, more like, what am I saying, um, mixing like my own shades and stuff. Right, so the way to test is get a brush. I want that one. Nope, I want this one. There we go. Take some paint. And then just make a swatch on my even in. It's just got really sunny here and it is boiling in my room. Thank you, weather. Yep. Yeah. And then you just want to swatch a bit of it. That is really nice. It's not as dark as it looks on here. But that is really nice. What do you guys think of this colour? Looking good for me. And then you let this dry. I've lost a chat room. Where's my chat room? There we go. Um, you let it dry. Um, first thing to, t to check is how grainy it is. If it has lots of bits in it, you need to um, do the mulling more because it means like the pigments haven't broken up and been incorporated into the binder enough. Um, and the, then the other thing is let it dry, get a piece of tissue and do a rub test. And if no pigment comes off, it's great. If pigment comes off, it means that you don't have enough binder in there yet. And, um, if it ends up looking a bit shiny, then you're having too much binder. So you need to put a little bit more pigment in. Oh, this one? Yeah, you can totally have a dot card, that Eve. It is a lovely colour. I wish it was this colour, though, because it's really nice. Maybe I can make this colour once I become more advanced at it. Yay, I'm glad you guys are liking this colour. Yeah, completely unexpected. One of the problems with crema is... Um, you only ever get to see the photo of the pigment, dry pigment. So you just get a photo of this and you have no idea how it's going to end up. And also I wish they'd do reviews, like a way for customers to be able to leave reviews because I know Eve and Dan both experienced some problems with some of the pigments that said it's suitable to be made into watercolour, but it really wasn't. And it'll just be useful to be able to see that. Is it very granulating? Let's have a look. Um, a little bit, but not super granulating yet. So while that's drying, you just keep on mulling because the more you mull, the more incorporated things get. Yeah. Ah, oh, the bolt test. Yes, it is the bolt test. How do you test yours, Dan? So how you guys been anyway? Eve 
Eve saying the granulation will depend on how mulled it is. Oh, so like, if I don't mull it as much, you'll be more granulating? That's really good. Don't know. Thank you, Eve. So I think I missed a whole conversation on hobbyist and artist materials. Evie's saying more mulling equals smaller particles equals less granulation. Okay. It's just so relaxing. I don't know how, how it is for you guys watching, but for me, this just, just this motion is so relaxing. Oh, okay, so I'm getting the gist of this conversation. So it's about people giving hobbyists a hard time for using artist material. That is absolutely bonkers. Like, why do we care what other people use? Seriously. Like, just care about your own patch of grass. You know? Just care about what you're using. And stop getting jealous about what other people are using. And if you have that time, go make more art, dear artists. They, uh, to me, and, you know, I do this full time and therefore I'm a professional artist. I don't care who, you, who else uses artist quality material. Like, really? Is that where your life is right now? That you have to care and get mad about what other, like, other art supplies that you're not even using gets used by the right people or not? That's, that's insane. That's just, you have way too much time on your hand if you're doing that. You know, just, you need to question your life values if that's the thing you're going to get mad about. Honestly, so much hate. Oops, sorry. Honestly, just, and it's, it's also like, I get people um, consistently leaving mean comments on my channel, on my videos, and I'm like, you clearly hate my channel, which is totally fine. I don't have a problem with you hating my channel. You know, I am a, I'm not like a, oh, you know, really calm and soothing and really palatable, like, like Eve, I'm not like Eve, right? I'm a little bit more in your face and so you're not gonna like everything I do and that's totally okay I'm totally fine with not everybody liking me you know some people are gonna find me uncomfortable I'm okay with that but why are you when you consistently hate my channel keep watching my channel this to me is bizarre like how much lacking are you in self-efficacy that you keep forcing yourself to watch something you don't like it's madness I tell you Hey Grace, nice to see you. Yes, this paint I believe is ultramarine pink. And by the way, to um, the, the, the haters to leave comments and thumbs down on my um, video, please go ahead, um, carry on because you are actually helping my channel grow. Because as far, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but as far as YouTube is concerned, they don't care if you leave a meek comment or thumbs down because they, all they care about is the fact that you interacted with my videos. And so thank you so much. I'm very grateful when I see a thumbs down because I'm like, thank you. You just helped my channel grow. And um, you literally just helped my video get seen by more people. And I'm not talking about proper critique. That's totally fine. I'm totally cool. Ro 
mean, it's totally fine that, you know, your first fancy paints were cool. Like, you do what you want. Seriously. Like, it's not... The problem is not with with us. The problem is with people that have a problem with that. <laughs> Grace, yeah, slightly <laughs> off. Maybe I have the timer. What time is it right where you are, Grace? Maybe I had the um, time written down on my thing wrong. Are you dry? Need to dry. Sorry, this is supposed to be a relaxing thing and I keep ranting about this. I'm not usually a rant. No, I, I do rant in um, private <laughs> a lot. This is how comfortable I've become on live stream to you guys. Oh, and are you Pacific Standard Time, Grace? <laughs> Thank you. Eve says, ranting can be really healthy. Let that steam out. Thank you. And the D says, I find you really relaxing. And you'll mind your own patch of grass attitude is my cup of tea. Yeah, just mind your own patch, man. Like, if you have that much time to write a mean comment to, like, someone, like, anybody, then um, go and paint something. <laughs> or go make paints. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you so much for coming by, Valerie. Really, Siam, people get angry that you speak Finnish with a quite heavy dialect? That's just insane. Do we not live in 2018? Seriously. Some people have serious anger issues. Oh, no, I got paint on my muller. I'm just going to wipe that off before I get that on my hand. Oh no, you don't have to wake up at 6.45, Grace. I'm so sorry that we're, like, because of the time difference, it's so early for you. Oh, thank you, Dan. I'm glad you like my um, style of videos. So it, I'm totally okay with people hating my style. Um, I'm not, like, delusional to think that everyone hates my, that uh, everyone loves what I do. They don't. You know, this is just so nice to more. Thank you so much for popping by, Robin. Is Paolo still around? He's quiet. Almost dry. It's touch dry at least. I'll get the tissue ready. Oh, the sun keeps going in and out and in. It's playing havoc with my brightness. Oh, thank you, Grace. I really appreciate you, like, setting an alarm to watch my stream. Oh, that's so nice. Hey, Paolo, I'm glad you're still around. Hey, Calamity, it is um, ultramarine pink. And it's gorgeous. Oh, 
Luba's asking, how do I know when the pigment is mixed well? Well, if it's not mixed well, you tend to see um, granules on here. And then I was saying before that you do a patch test. And then once it's dry, you rub it with a piece of tissue, which I'm about to do. Ooh, look, I have it on my finger. Let me just get rid of that. And um, you let the patch dry and then you rub tissue over it and if no pigment comes off then it's ready does cyan live in Lapland? that's so awesome yep nothing coming off that so I think this is ready yep that's totally awesome so I'm just gonna Oh, come on oh Ooh, sorry about that goodness that was that must have been loud for you guys <sighs> who asked you what's your name Dan Dan I think also like it's really easy to forget when you see someone putting themselves out there on YouTube that that's a real person <laughs> you know we're not like robots or algorithms I'm just gonna clean this uh, no nothing's broken basically what happens is it forms a suction between the glass the paint and this and um, sometimes it can get really hard to pull it off such a nice color Ma was asking are there any cheap but still good watercolors that you recommend I'm quite a newbie and have only tried very cheap paint hi bestie boy welcome back Oh, I get you, Dan. Um, cheap paints. I've not personally tried it, so like I'm sorry if it's not true. But I hear like, is it Van Gogh? Is a good student quality paint. I'm sure Eve will be able to help you out with that. Uh, yeah, I can do another swatch. To compare the granulation that's a really good idea thank you d there you go we'll have a look once it's dry and i'm gonna pan this up Oh, sorry. Yeah, everyone's saying Van Gogh's really good. Paolo is just saying that Van Gogh is putting out 30 plus new paints in the fall. That's good to know. This is actually thick, quite thick already. Don't know if you can see that. Also, obviously, different country will have, like, 
the best, cheapest or reasonably affordable student brand will differ depending on where you are as well. I think I'm gonna cough. I'll be back in a second. Everyone's saying I want to eat that paint. It looks delish. I don't recommend you eat this paint. But I do know what you mean. Okay, I just can't look at the um, chat while I do this. So if you have any questions, just hold on until I've finished panning. It's so thick. Yes, because coughing fit comes when you need to do a steady hand job thing. Yeah, I'm really um, interested to see how this dries as well. Uh, do I try putting more in or just leave it at that? I'm going to leave it at that. Right, next pan. Why does coughs have to sneak up on you? Just as you need to do a steady, you need a steady hand. Like, I didn't need steady hand any other time in the stream. Although my health is getting better, slowly. I've given up gluten. This is day three of giving up gluten and like my husband wasn't convinced about 
where the gluten was making me ill. But, uh, ah! No! I try to be sorry for that loud. You try to be neat and then paint does its own thing anyway. I'm trying to be neat now because I remember in Dan's live stream he said that like cleaning up once it dries is a bit of a nightmare and I don't want nightmare cleaning up tasks. So, maybe I shouldn't talk and feel at the same time. How do you guys do this? How do you guys talk on live stream, keep up with the chat, and feel paint at the same time? You're saying neat pants? Is there such a thing? I tr I'm trying. So three. I don't know if that's going to be a four pan, but I'll give it a go. No, this is not going to fill the whole pan. I'm going to get a half pan. Yeah, Dan, I totally know now how you get it everywhere. Because this is impossible. Kudos to you guys. Although this is a little bit easier because um, the paint's gone quite go goopy, gloopy. So it's a little bit easier to control than a, like a really runny one. That's really hard. So just under two and a half pounds, I think. Bit won't come off. Come on. There we go. All panned. Um, I have you. Uh, Womika is asking whether I used Ohuhu watercolor or Nicker poster. I have used Nicker poster. Um, I picked some up when I was in Japan. They're okay. They're just poster paints. So these are the pans. And I'm going to put these there. Where am I going to put these? I didn't think this through. Okay, let me think this first. All right, I'm going to move you guys over here. So you can sit there for now. And I'll move it after the stream. I'm just going to note down what I put in it. Bye, Alan. Thank you for popping in. Few drops of 
from a binder. Please press on the table. Right, so I'm going to clean this and then we can try another one. So if you want to vote between um, Red Ox Iron Oxide Micronized, Ultramarine Blue Dark, Caput Mortem Violet, Spinel, I think this is Spinel Grey. Ultramarine blue extra dark and caput mortem. Then, um, if you want to take a vote while I clean this up, thank you for your patience and waiting for me to finish dishing, panning that out. It takes so much focus, guys. I never had a clue. Yeah, so many choices. I'm I'm reading a lot of Caput Morton Violet. Like a lot. So did Anthony ask a question? If you want to ask me a question, a um, not while I'm panicking because I can't see the screen, but um, if you type question in capital letters and then your question in normal font, that would be amazing because the um, chat does go quite fast. Uh, no, Vonica, Vonica, I haven't panned Nika poster pages. I mean, they come in a small jar anyway, so I feel like they didn't need to be put into a pan. I guess you could. They, they will crack, though. I know that. And I know cracking dried paints does um, concern some people. Um, it doesn't concern me, but I thought I'd just let you know that. The choices are... Uh, Caput Mortem Dark, Ultramarine Blue Extra Dark, Spinel Grey, Caput Mortem Violet, Red Iron Oxide Micronized, and Ultramarine Blue Dark. Am I going too fast? Okay, I'll go really slow and then we'll take a vote again. Ultramarine blue, dark. Ultramarine blue, extra dark. Although the dark seem darker than the extra dark. Caput Mortem um, dark. Caput Mortem violet. Spinel Grey and Red Iron Oxide.
So the reason why I just wanted to cover this because I didn't understand this until I started making paint as to why handmade watercolor paint as uh, you know reasonably expensive and that's because the way people like Dan and Eve make it like I just filled that to the top um, what will happen is as it dries it'll sink and then you have to put another layer of paint down let that dry and that takes weeks between layers until it dries but still looks like a full amount of paint in the pan so that can take many many weeks sometimes months to create a um a full pan or a full half pan of paint and it's also a lot of pigments when you think about it as well so I'm seeing a lot of um, cap the pans melted how did the pans melt did I missed something Did you put it in the oven? Hi Stacy. Okay, so we're gonna do Captain Morton Violet, which should be really interesting. I really like Captain Morton and I thought this was a fun thing to try. Question, can you put your handmade paints into tubes or will it separate? It shouldn't separate if it's well made. However, it's the choice of tubes that um, can be problem problematic. Why can I not say that word? So um, I'm just doing pans for now because I'm making them for myself for now, like the first batch. Um, I, I have... Um, as a test batch, I don't need it to be in tubes, although I would like to be able to make it into tubes at some point, just for myself, because I prefer tubed watercolours. But like for now, I am um, things like the ultramarine blue that I use a lot, and I like to have it in a liquid form, I'm just keeping them in a jar. Um, my mask, where's my mask? So same again, one tablespoon of the powder yeah I've got the mask on thank you So dark, are you sure you're not from the DC universe? The paint maybe. Oh, it's really, really grainy. Like, really grainy. I can feel it. It's super grainy. <laughs> this might not be fun. 
Can you hear that graininess? I'm not sure if this is going to turn into a good paint. You can hear that, right? Oh, I'm not... Okay. Oh, that is going to be fun. I might have to, like, quit if it's a nightmare. Particularly if it's going to make a lot of a horrible noise for you guys. Oh, that is grainy. Oh my goodness. What is this, sand? If the noise gets too much, I'm going to um, turn the volume down. I'm not looking forward to this. Oh, oh. Okay, I'm not going to do this on live stream because I don't want to talk to you guys. I'm just going, what am I going to do with this? I don't know. Um, no, it's really bad sound. Like, see, that's not good sound. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to talk to you guys now. I'm going to clean this off and we'll pick another color because um, I'm probably not the Caput Mortem dark either because... Um, this is not going to be fun for you guys. But that's how it looks. It's probably going to need a lot of work. So that you know. Okay. okay. I'm going to do it for a few minutes. Since you guys are all saying it's okay. Oh, no. No. I can't handle this. No. Sorry. It's, yeah, it's definitely worse for me. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not doing it. No, can't, no. Okay, I, and I really appreciate that you guys are saying it's okay, but I can't do this. Like, the noise it's making is horrific. It's really bad. And I physically can't do it. Yeah, I'll put it in a jar, as Eve suggests. Wow! That is my first not easy to um, mold paint I've encountered. Yeah, Anthony, I agree with you. It is nail on chalkboard, but worse, I think. So we're not going to do this. I do have um, earbuds, the problem isn't that, because I also have noise cancelling headphones, problem is Jazz, she's right next door, and if she hears that and disturbs her sleep, then um, it's just not going to be good for her. Yeah, I will, I will try <laughs> grinding this, maybe at night. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then I drop a whole load of jars. No, that's not going to be big enough, is it? That's going to have to do. Yeah, I don't want to um, disturb her sleep, really. Because she can get really funny if her sleep is disturbed. And she can hear high pitched noise really. No, Dan, I do not need to get Garnet. I know that's the one that's the most horrific one. I do read what you guys talk about. Um, I can't read more prior to adding liquid diamante because the powder will just go everywhere. But I don't recommend Caput Mortem Violet from Crema. Um, 
unless you want to torture yourself, your family and anybody else you live with. It's just so great and it, it will probably take a lot of work. So um, kudos to Snellia for making such a beautiful Caput Morton paint when it's this grainy. Well, they'll probably do it by machine, right? Anthony saying all the iron oxides. I like that though. Good to know. Um, the one good thing is the red iron oxide I bought is micronized, so hopefully it's not this bad. I'm kind of glad I got the micronized version now. Eve is saying not all the iron oxides are like this. Honestly, this is so bad. This is so painful. So if this is what I have to go through to get caput mortem, I am Totally happy to pay Sennelier for their very beautifully made, very smooth paint. Because <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work. A lot of not fun work? I don't mind a lot of work if it was um, fun to do, but I don't think this would be. So that's jarred. I might work on that another time, but I'm not going to do it on the live stream, which kind of rules out the caput mortem as well. Maybe maybe I'll do the spinel next. Cleaning everything up again. So what colour would you like to see? I'll show you the paint in a minute once I've cleared all this up. So when you get a mulling glass, well I didn't get a mulling glass, this is just a chopping board, um, which is toughened glass, so I thought it would work well, and I just, it came with a sticky f little feet that I just took off so that it lays nice and flat, and also this is one of those carpet or rug um it's it's for rugs and um it stops the rug from sliding everywhere and i just got a roll of this really cheap at ikea and uh, that just stops the thing from moving when you're using something like this it's advisable to condition the surface first and eve very kindly sent me um some um no, it's not pigments, but it's a powder that is specifically made for roughing up this surface. But it came with a warning that it sounds horrendous, hideous, and her cat's freaked out. So I haven't had the guts to do them yet. So next up, we have a choice of spinel, ultramarine extra dark, or ultramarine dark. Hey, Peko! 
what would you like to see? Might go to the bathroom while you guys vote. I'll be back. Hello, ultramarine dark, the super extra dark, the least granular one. <laughs> I agree with you, Jayad. I wish I could tell. <clears throat> Although one thing I did notice with the Caput Mortem is, if I do this, you'll be able to see better. So you see like with all the other ones, a lot of pigment sticks to the bag. Whereas with the Caput Mortem, it's so, the particles are so big, it doesn't stick to the bag. So um, today I've learned that that is a good way of telling whether pigment is going to be suitable or, or, or pain-free to turn into a pigment. Oh yeah, I have the micronized... Sorry, red iron oxide as well. But I think everyone's saying extra dark. Let's do extra dark. This one. I do have another order of crema on its way because I told you paint making is incredibly addictive. So um, we'll have more paints, pigments to try. Not next time because as I promised people, I will fill my monster paint next time. Right, mask, mask, mask. Mask. Ultramarine extra dark. And you see how it's sticking to the spoon? I didn't have that at all with the Caput Mortem Violet because the grains were so big. So that's a warning. If it does that, I'm not going to make it on live stream. Uh, what pigments did I get? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. It was late night shopping, Dan. You know how it is. You just put stuff in the basket <laughs> and the next one you wake up and it's already ordered it was one of those i'll tell you we'll do an unboxing this one's like really intense blue i have high hopes for this Has anyone tried making pigments from this yet?
Yes, Escoda brushes are lovely. I love Escoda brushes too. Hey, Doodle Draw Art. I have a mask on right now because I don't want to breathe this in. That's why I sound weird. Oh, it's so blue. It's, oh wow, it's getting dark. It's getting really dark. Oh wow. It's like really dark. Come on, mix. So we're making paints today, do the art, draw art. Indeed, Vonka, safety first. Oh, it's so nice. This is way nicer than the historic one. Way nicer. It's so blue. Sorry, the cloud's gone in again. Let's adjust the brightness. There we go. What is the pigment? It's ultramarine blue. It is PV29.77007. I love that they get that fine grain in their identification. Yeah, I agree. This blue is gorgeous. Right, I can take my mask off. Oh, there we go. Whew, I can breathe. I mean, I could breathe in the mask. I can talk better though. So this is already way nicer, way nicer than the the historic one I tried. I got the very dark of that as well. And then once I make this paint, I can swatch both out for you, both this one and the um, um the historic one. And um, we can compare the difference between them. Will that extra dark compete with Indanthrum? Um, I don't think so. It's really a warm blue. It's definitely like a warm blue, whereas Indanthrum is more cool. No, hang on. Now I've got it wrong again, haven't I? Ah, where's my color chart? So it's like more towards the um, sailor blue yellow shade, which is a cool blue. Um, than like Indanthrum Brew, which is a warm blue, which still boggles my mind. Am I the only one that's still confused by that? Yes, I agree, Grace. It would be a bad mask if I couldn't breathe in it. I can totally breathe in it. Uh, Grace and Eve both says Indanthrum Blue is um, still warm. I can definitely swatch out whatever color you want me to compare it to once this paint is made how's that i'm getting bleached out scotland has such a changeable weather doodle draw art but what's your name doodle draw art is economical is it economical to mix your own paint okay so Per pan or per milliliter, yes. Yes, it is much cheaper to make your own paint. You know, you're not paying for that labor and the branding and all the overheads that the um, paint companies have to pay for. However, it's not going to be cheap overall because what happens is you buy one pigment, like it's happened to me, you buy one pigment, 
and you're like, oh, this is the only one I'm going to do. Then you buy two pigments. Then you're like, no, I'm still only going to do this. And that's it. And then all of a sudden, boxes start arriving at your house full of pigments. Full of pigments you didn't even know existed. And that's how it's not cheaper in the like in overall sense because you will just get sucked into this. I was totally like, no, 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 I'm not gonna get like, um, hi Lisa. Okay, your name is Lisa. I'm gonna try and remember, but I am terrible with names. So you might have to tell me that every time. Thank you. Um, I was totally like, no, I'm just gonna make ultramarine blue because I need a lot of it and it seems like a, you know, a cheaper way to do it. Um, that wasn't that long ago, that was this month and I'm already making other colours. So, yeah, definitely not cheaper. So program, yes, if you have enormous amount of self-control. I, on the other hand, don't. I'm aware of this. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, okay. Now, I remember that your name is Lisa per video, per stream. It's okay. You don't have to remind me every time you write. Thank you. Yes, and the a new addiction is what well. It's very addictive because being able to make your own watercolour paint, isn't that magical? Like, to me, it is so magical. Like, what? You can make your own paint? You just get some powder and you get some binder like for me it's really easy because I just use a pre-mixed binder so I don't even have to like worry about gum arabic and mixtures and stuff I just you know two ingredients mix it together and you get watercolor paint and it blows my mind every time it's like is that easy well some pigments are super easy other pigments like we just saw like in the Caput Mortem, it's not easy. Um, but just being able to create that, I'm, I've always been into that kind of thing where you start off with a bunch of random things and you end up creating something useful. So like I do a lot of crochet and knitting because it's fascinating to me and needlework that you can get, you can just have a bundle of yarn that's not doing anything and make something really useful like blankets and cushions and you know even clothes it's just fascinating to me and to me it's incredibly empowering to be able to make your own stuff you know I make um well I can make all my own toiletries but for convenience I don't make all my toiletries anymore I only make some but to me that's empowering I have a choice you know I have control of what goes into my body or on my body rather than you know what big companies that doesn't even know I exist think I should put on my body I'm ranting again aren't I <laughs> yes Anthony exactly impulse controls and artists don't mix <laughs> um I kind of see it as a job as artist to be a little bit impulsive because we're supposed to create art through the resistance, right? And do things that other people aren't doing and stuff. So yeah, I guess you're right that, um, I don't know who considers themselves artists and think they have very good self-control. I'm partly asking because I admire you. Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> Grace is saying, Otto, stop buying pigments at night. Yeah, I've learned that now. <laughs> I don't even drink. It's not even like I drunk lots and got drunk and then, you know, drunk shopped pigments. I was, I was totally sober as well. To be fair, I wasn't on like four or five hours sleep at the time because it was when my cough was really bad. But still, yeah, I, I should stop shopping paints at night.
um, yes, instead of buying out Dan stock, this is exactly why I started because I feel so bad that um, I bought Dan stock of Ultramarine Blue out. And um, yeah, I, I was just like, oh, after I did it, you know, after the haze of wanting to buy it lifted, I was like, oh, that was bad. My bad. I, I'm not, I shouldn't do that again. So as I apologize many times before, I am sorry for having bought out Dan's um, stock before. I'm not going to do it. Um, when he puts his new lot on sale, I'm not going to touch the ultramarine blue. I promise. <laughs> Dan saying, ha, me, self-control, no chance. Dan saying, no self-control. Eve says, I was about to say that the only artist I know with good self-control is Grace. Grace saying, me. So she has very good control. D says, he, um, he is an, uh, they are an artist and they don't. Sorry, Grace, I just... I should use they. I apologize. Uh, Vonka is asking, are you going to try to, okay, I'm going to ask, answer these questions first. It's saying, can we see a halfway swatch and a finished swatch, please? Yeah, I can swatch that now. And then Wamika is asking, are you going to try the 30 by 30 direct watercolor change for June? Oh, what is that, please? I've never heard of it. Oh, it's so nice. It's so blue. Can you guys see? Nope, I can't. It's like really nice blue. It's really strong blue. I'm sorry, I, I totally forgot Grace. I will try to remember. Artie is saying, I go through stages where I do and don't about self-control. Um, I find when my depression is in full force, I have poor control. Yeah, I know how you feel because I go through, I usually go through two manic phases and two depressions a year. Um, this year I've been really lucky and um, I've coasted the first six months without going to either, which is the first time that's happened since I um, developed bipolar, I first got bipolar, or you know, first started to showing symptoms recognizably of bipolar when I was about 14, 16, I can't remember off the top of my head. And ever since then, I had this very clear cycle. Um, I hope you guys are comfortable with me talking about mental health. Um, so, There'd be three months of manic phase and three months of depression. So I've had many. Um, I, I've gone through depression many times. I've also gone through many, many times as well. And I do find that for me, it's like the opposite. Self-control gets harder when I'm manic. And then I spend the entirety of my depression phase feeling guilty about um, like what I bought or what I've done or what I've said during my manic phase. Vomica is saying it's a challenge by Marco where you try only to use watercolor with no drawing or ink and try to get 30 paintings in one, in the month. Oh, that's cool. I might, yeah. I once did 300 paintings in 30 days. That was crazy. Like, not, like, big, complicated paintings. But um, last October, I think, I spent 
the whole of October painting 10 paintings a day. They're quick ones and it was such a useful experience because when you have to just push out that many paintings, you end up trying so many different things. Uh, Grace is asking, Otto, nice, do you know of anything differently that you're doing that could be changing it? Um, so this isn't like a medical advice or anything. I'm just, and um, this isn't like a scientific study at all. So please don't take it as a medical advice. Obviously, um, you know, speak to your doctor about everything. Don't listen to a layman like me. I might have a doctor in my name. But that doctor title is for computers and not um, for um, psychology or psychiatry. So, you know, this is just what answering Grace's question of what I feel like made the difference. And to me, it's been meditation. I mean, I've done lots and lots of other things as well, which has also helped. Like I take... Um, my vitamin D3s and high levels of cod liver oil and stuff and they really help as well but what seemed to have kind of made a big difference is meditation and walking I try to like since my husband's been looking for a job we've been able to go out for walks a lot and um I'm terrible at going for walks on my own. I have I have a kind of agoraphobia that means I'm totally okay if I'm with somebody. Um, it could be anyone. As long as I'm walking with someone, I'm totally okay. But if I have to walk anywhere on my own, I just can't do it. So it's been great in that sense that while he's been looking for a job, you know, he's been at home. So we've been able to go for lots of walks and... I know walk, walking or just any exercise helps. I'm just not very good at doing them. Oh, thank you. Grace is saying, talk about what I want is my stream. Yeah. But I, I'm also aware that um, it can be triggering for people. Like, I once did a talk about mental, uh, about my bipolar and it really made me aware that you know i'm really lucky that i can be unmedicated and not be suicidal i have a choice i have that choice um well no i can get suicidal um if it's really bad but i still i can cope with that medication whereas for some people it's not a choice and just talking about it the whole thing was was really triggering for someone in in like in not in like oh i'm scared of lots of small holes i'm triggered but actually it sets them off into like a manic phase or depression phase so i just want to make sure that you guys are all comfortable with me talking about mental health because mental health is a really a big subject that's close to my heart like really close to my heart you know having lived with it all my life and I will talk a lot about mental health on this channel because I find it's incredibly use, um, important to be talking about it. And of course, like, there's nothing wrong with being on medication. I think it's really brave to be on medication. You know that's what you need and you're getting the help you need. I think that's totally awesome. So when I say... I'm not on medication. Please don't think I judge people that are on medication. I don't at all. I think it's totally awesome that you got the help you need. That's all that matters. This is really smooth already. So let's have a look at this. I mean, this is looking pretty smooth already. Thank you, Jade. She's um, Jade, they're saying that um, we can tap off ourselves if we get triggered either mentally or emotionally and I really appreciate you guys saying that because you know we're all responsible for ourselves 
Um, Gracie's saying that happened to me. I could go outside with someone, but then I got worse and couldn't anymore. Luckily, I trained my service dog around the same time. That is really awesome that you found a solution. Um, yeah, I never thought of service dog. That is really cool, Grace. I just get really, really anxious. Um, if I have to walk outside on my own, if I'm with someone, I can go anywhere. I'm, I'm really good at navigating as well. That's the irony of it. Um, but if it's on my own, I just can't do it. You're saying, I know I need meds to function. And yeah, I think that's awesome that you have medication that works for you. Romka is saying they have ADHD and they need medication. I think that's dry, so I'm just going to check. Anthony saying CBD saved my life. I've had CBD as well. That's cognitive behavior. Is it? No, that's CBT. What's CBD, Anthony? Okay, I've got blue coming off, so I'm going to put more pick, um, binder in. Ariel should try geocaching. I do. I love geocaching. I am a proper geocacher. But again, I have to be with someone to be able to do that. So what happened was I just did the rub test with the tissue and you can see some blue left on there and that basically means you haven't got enough binder to keep the pigment on the um, paper so I'm just putting more binder in like a half teaspoon and uh, we'll see how it goes. Thank you, Grace. I'll look into that. I'm not sure if I would qualify for a surface dog because really the main thing I need help right now is um, just the walking thing, or like walking on my own thing. And, you know, I'd much rather service dogs go to people who need a service dog for much more serious issues. But I will totally look into it. Dan saying, can I get a service cat? Yeah, that would be awesome. This is such a beautiful paint. I think my service animal at the moment is a cat called Marley. And he is a semi-feral cat that has taken up residence at the Royal Botanical Gardens in Edinburgh. And one of the staff told me that what happened was obviously he used to be owned by someone. I probably told you guys this before. Um, he was owned by someone that lived around the um, botanical gardens. And then one day they just left. They moved away and didn't take Molly. And... 
so Mali decided, well, there's like this huge, I think it's something like 10 hectare or 10, it's, it's a massive garden and it's incredibly well kept because it's the Royal Botanical Garden and um, I'll just take up residence here. So every day, I think, pretty much, he's there. And um, some of the, um, obviously, you know, some of the um, staff have caught on to this and also, you know, guests, visitors have caught on to this. So like I, when I go to the gardens, I always carry some kibble for him to make sure he can be fed nice treats and some of the staff feed him. I'm sure other visitors feed him too. And um, and then uh, I think somebody does like a different house nearby does let him sleep at night. Like he has a bed or something, but he hangs out all day in the gardens. Because why you know why wouldn't you when you have a territory as beautiful as a royal botanical gardens? And um, we went to see him. Well, we went to the gardens yesterday, and we saw him and I gave him his kibble and then it, we were sat on this bench and um, he got onto the bench and there was like a bag full of stuff between myself and my husband and um, he just sat on that, sat between us and um, he just fell asleep for like we petted him for like an hour and 20 minutes, like a really long time. Grace is saying, I just want to be, so that's my um, service animal because he's awesome. Um, Grace is saying, just, I just want to be clear that service animals can only be dogs and miniature horses. Other animals can be support animals but are not under the service label. What I find awesome about that statement is that miniature horses can be service animals. That's so cool. I wonder how Jazz will take to a service miniature horse. Right, I'm going to try this. So that's the swatch wet. We'll let that dry. So how are you guys doing in the chat? Grace says many horses can't be anymore. She think they think the Lord just covered horses that were trained years ago. That would have been so awesome, though. Um, Dread say asking, are you keeping this chat? We all have shared our diagnosis. If any, if if even a single person that have shared their diagnosis feel uncomfortable about leaving this chat, I am happy to take it off. Although you should also be aware that, um, you know, it does get read out on the video. So if you feel completely uncomfortable, next time I would recommend, or like write in the chat that you don't want me to mention it. Because I wouldn't want to mention something you don't want mentioning.
Where did you buy your pigment and powders? Did this specify the actual P numbers? Um, I bought them from Crema, and yes, they do. Crema's very good at specifying the pigment number. Um, they will actually go into the dot digits, so PB29.77007. So if you have problem with this chat staying, just write in um, big capital letters, I don't want this chat to stay, and I will take it off. I think that's fair, isn't it? Sorry about that, a cough snuck up on me. How are we doing here? It's really nice blue. Anyone have any issues with this chat staying? I think the chat is happily talking about service animals. I think service animals are awesome. If, did you notice anyone saying they don't want to chat? Left up, please. Oh, paint mixing is just so nice. You just get to play with this lovely liquid. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Totally. I'm not even going to say who said they were uncomfortable. I'm just going to take the chat down um may i please ask you to remind me at the end and if if anyone notices that the chat is up um message me um on like twitter um twitter's usually best for me um but you can also message me on instagram and i will take it off i will promise to take it off i just might not remember it after the um stream <laughs> but if someone can remind me then i will totally do it Yeah, mental health is hard to talk about for, you know, whatever reason. And I think that's okay too. I'm just very, very, very comfortable at talking about my mental health because I used to work for a mental health charity and I did um, lots of talks on bipolar and stuff. So I'm totally comfortable with it, but I also respect the fact that not everybody is, you know? Thank you, Eve. She says she'll remind me. She's such a great mod. You're amazing, Eve. Thank you. She's like, if you haven't noticed, Eve is like my soul sister on YouTube, I think. And I am... One of the things that I'm so grateful for having started this YouTube thing is the people. That I've met because um partly because of the whole you know anxiety and going outside but also I'm quite socially anxious person I'm also very socially awkward in real life um so I find making friends in real life like face to face harder like I'm not you're not gonna find me at parties unless I really have to be there 
um, and you're not going to be finding me in the kitchen chatting to everyone. Why in parties do people gather in the smallest space possible, which is usually the kitchen? I don't understand. But um, yeah, I just wouldn't. I'd be like somewhere else. Oh, thank you, Jade. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so, so um, social anxiety, not great at meeting people, um, whereas, you know, I grew up online. I've been online since 96? No, 95 or 94? And I took to it like duck to water, that's how I ended up with a PhD in computer science. And um, I am totally comfortable at making friends and communicating online. And having this channel has um, got me meeting so many awesome people and um, I've already gained so many beautiful friendships that I'm really appreciative of. So I think that is definitely the best bit. Okay, is the thing dry? No, nope, that's still wet. Well, it's not shiny, so that's good. Sayin, are you saying it's Finland, right? You can't get loans if you get diagnosed with anxiety. What? That sounds ridiculous. Yeah, um, Art is saying that um, starting their channel helps them focus on something and create a game. And yeah, that's also another thing. Like, because once you start a channel, you have to create regular content. You actually get to do more and try more and try new things like paint making, um, which is awesome as well you end up having no excuse to not do something art related when you have a YouTube art channel, which is always good. If, you know, if anything, any mechanism that's, you know, reasonably healthy to you, help you create more art and creating art is what you want to do, then I think it's awesome. I think my throat is giving up on me now. So what I'm going to do is try the tissue test, get this made into a proper paint and then that'll be, and then pan it up. And then that will be it for this week, I think. So you guys have stuck by. Thank you so much. Hello, Paolo. Welcome back. So the one thing about being diagnosed bipolar and not mean not being medicated that you have to be weary of in the United Kingdom certainly is if you are diagnosed bipolar and unmedicated you automatically lose your license your driving license um, I did and um, there's just no way around it it's a hard line you either take medication and are allowed to drive or you don't take medication and not allowed to drive and 
I actually don't have a problem with that. I mean, it was hard to lose my license and I left my car. But I also see a lot of people. You know, I, I know many other people who got bipolar. And yeah, like some people really shouldn't be driving at all. And if the only way we can establish draw a line is whether they're medicated or not, then yeah, that's okay. You know, I'm happy to sacrifice my license to keep the road a little bit safer than have people who really shouldn't be driving because they are completely manic or depressed or suicidal even to be on the road. So, I mean, it's it's a really sticky thing to decide. I think that's why they go for such a hard line of just medication or no medication. You can argue that, you know, I've met plenty of people who are bipolar on medication and still shouldn't drive. <laughs> Jade's saying, get people to chauffeur you around. I don't need to. Um, really, uh, one of the reasons why I enjoy living in Edinburgh is it's an incredibly walkable city. And we also have a really, really good bus network. So I've, I can count on one hand the times I actually need cars, really. Yeah, it wasn't easy to give up my license, but I understood why it had to be, it, why the line had to be there, because there's just no line. There's no easy line that can be drawn. So if um, just medicated or unmedicated is the line you have to draw at, then that's okay. I'd rather that than have people who really shouldn't be on the road be on the road. Yeah, I am so glad, Lisa, that you want to pay, make paints. It's so much fun. But as I want every time, it is a very expensive hobby. So that's almost right. It's like, I'm going to try it. That's good. It's white. So that's done. I'm going to pan it up. Yay! Uh, Jay's asking what's the difference between bipolar depression and non-bipolar depression. Um, there isn't, like, in terms of what you go through when you're depressed, there isn't one. Um, we go through the same thing. However, with me, I go through it repeatedly, like over and over. And um, so I've had this since I was 14. I ha I've had it twice a year. So I'm 38. That's 24 years. So I've had it 48 times. And that is kind of the difference. And it, that's also, that can be both easier and harder to deal with. It's easier in that, <clears throat> for me certainly, because I have such a regular cycle, I know if I just sit it out for three months, things will get better. So there's kind of hope at the end of the tunnel. But believe me, when you've had 48 episodes of depression, um, and it can get really bad, then, um, oh, it just wears you down, you know? And um, you know it's going to happen again. But when it does, you're like, I can't believe it's happening again. Like, I've gone through this enough times, have I not? So, yeah. And also, it depends on the type of bipolar. Some people have, like, the repeated depression, which is just, like, a little bit of mania. And other people have both... Um, proper depression and proper mania and some people have like half a depression and half mania as well. It just depends uh, um, 
if what you are asking is need correct it's also the fact that it repeats um i think there is a guideline on how many times it repeats in like a set period of time but yeah whereas like people with depression just depression can have it for years and like my heart goes out to them because <laughs> um at least yeah mine's just as bad but at least i know it'll come to an end after like three months so yeah um do uh, lisa's asking what would you store the paints in i think i tuned in when you were filling a bag with a different blue is that true storing it in a bag okay so what i do this is like a test batch this is like my first batch so i'm not gonna sell it or anything i'm still undecided on whether i want to start selling handmade paints when like dan and eve do fabulous job already um but if i were to start selling then what i would do is i would fill some of this into a pan and then store the rest in a jar so that i can let the pan dry and what will happen is um it goes right you know it dries and as it dries it the level will go down so then once that layer's dry you dig out your jar and um pour a new layer on top and you keep repeating that until it's properly full why does she man she hate me right now why what did i do i mean it's fine if you hate me that's okay Okay, I am panning. I can't read the chat, so if you have any questions, just hold on. This is where it gets messy. Oh, got ya. So this is a little bit more runny, so it'd be a faster process at least. Denise, hello! You came in just at the moment. I can't talk. I'll be with you... In a second. I'm making paint. This is Ultramarine Very Dark by Crema. Yeah, this is a lot faster to fill because it's more runny. So it's one pan. Don't spill. Do not go everywhere, please. Please don't spill. Oh, it was going so well. This takes so much focus. Like everything else is um, pretty relaxed. And then right at the end, you have to focus so hard. I'm so sorry that I keep going quiet, but. I'm gonna put it down first and then pour the last bit. I think that's going to be enough for a full pan, so I'll get another one. This is a lot easier to pan than the um, ultramarine pink was.
honestly, I don't know how, like, Dan and Eve and Ame does this because he takes so much focus to just fill a full pan, let alone lots and lots of little half pans. Look, if I start selling pens, you guys, it's not going to be as amazingly wrapped as, like, Ames. Like, it's definitely not going to have masking tape or around four pans. I have poor eyesight as it is. And um, I, I just can't do that. <laughs> I noticed there's a couple of people who's come in. I am nearly finishing. I made two paints. We had a little unboxing and then we made paints from Ultramarine Pink. Um, maybe another full pan. And this is Ultramarine Very Dark. And I'm about to finish. Once I finish this, then um, I'm going to take questions because I actually can't read the chat in this while I do this because it takes so much focus. If I look away, my hand is just going to spill. So if you have any questions, just hold on because I can't read the chat right now. Ah, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's okay. Okay. Okay, that's done. Whew. So I got three and a half full pans I think I overfilled that one a bit oh thank you Denise um yes I actually gave up gluten three days ago and I am feeling a lot better already like my husband was really skeptical about one well, he wasn't skeptical he was totally supportive but wasn't sure whether gluten was a thing and then he's seen how much better I've got so fast that um yeah we're pretty convinced already but i have taken what day are we on thursday yesterday i took one of those blood tests for food allergies and sensitivities so we'll see what that comes back as as well i just want to get to the bottom of this and i am tired of waiting on doctors who aren't really interested in doing anything um and trying to get them to do something about it so and I also don't want to be on the medication that um, I'm on I'm on Omoprazole at the moment and that can have some very serious side effect if you stay on it long term and I've been on it in total about five months already and I'm starting to feel it uh, one of it is uh, memory loss, and I'm really feeling that at the moment. I don't know if that's like lack of sleep or from the side effect, but either way, something needs to change. And the major thing that really bothered me about Omoprazole was that it wasn't helping. I was on like double dose, and it still wasn't helping. So, right, questions. Otto, do you think it's an intolerance or celiac? How bad was it for you? So, um, Grace, I don't know. Um, they have offered me the celiac test, but then I have to eat gluten every meal for two months. And basically, I just, I'm not going to do that because... Um, for the food intolerance blood test, I took, I forced myself to eat some gluten and I was really sick. Like I haven't had 
that much gluten for a while because I've been so ill and it just made me so ill and so I'm like I just I can't do that I can't force myself to do that for two months just to find out if I'm celiac or an intolerance if if avoiding it helps me then I'm just gonna do that right other questions Uh, question, can you let us know about any shrinking and testing them out once things are dry, please? Oh, I was going to um, swatch out the old ultramarine blue for you, wasn't I? And then you can see how much it shrinks. Let me get them for you. So, ow, ow, I just hit my elbow on the chair, elbow on the chair, and that really hurt. <laughs> right, so, this is the historic ultramarine blue. I think they both are. And um, I made this a while back. This one's totally dry. Well, it's touch dry anyway. And this one I made with the Crema binder. Uh, Crema has their own ready-made binder that has honey in it. And this one is the Schmincke's one. And so with the Crema one, you, can you see that there's it shrinks a lot more than the Schmincke one? There's nothing wrong with the shrinkage, but I know you guys have asked about the shrinkage. So... Grace is saying that they did a FODMAP, FODMAP diets are hard, that's why I'm like, I'll just take the blood test, it's fine. Um, my philosophy is if the blood test tells me anything useful, then I'll just take that rather than uh, go through the FODMAP. Um, but if that doesn't, then I, I will have to go through the FODMAP. And uh, I don't know if this is still wet. Yeah, this is still pretty soft and sticky. You can see it on the palette. Well, I can see it on the palette. Did it help though? Like, did you find out what you needed to find out, Grace? And then I will swatch them for you. So let me label them. This is Crema Ultramarine Blue extra dark and then we are going to do so this side is going to be the historic um ultramarine blue very dark and for those of you who missed out on the explanation of the historic ultramarine blue very dark what happened was there was a pigment maker that went like bust I think in the 1970s and they had stored a lot of the pigment samples in a warehouse and then someone found it and Kramer basically bought them out so it's a very limited supply pigment and for some reason when I first bought ultramarine blue from Kramer I ended up buying that unknowingly then I found out that Crema does like their, you know, the modern ultramarine blue. So this is the um, how long did you ha did I have to mold the last one? Uh, I think about thirty minutes, but I didn't need to. It was more that I got the um, mix wrong, so I had to. Um, just play around with it and mix more pig um, binder in and then mix that well so probably mulling wise it was probably more like 
15 minutes, 20 minutes. So this is the one with the crema binder and it re-wets super easy because it's still wet basically. Yeah, I can zoom in. Thank you, Eve. Do, 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 zoom, 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 zoom. Okay, that's as far as I can go digitally. I can also manually like lower the camera as well, but is this okay? I will play around with the um, brightness and the white balance once I've painted this. And this is the one with Schmincke. And you know what? Schmincke's one rewets easily as well. It's just not as easily as Kremers. I need more water. So that's with crema binder and that is with schminke. Sorry about that, I just had to cough. Oh wow, I had a glass of um, soy milk with um, honey that I melted in some hot water and the honey had shrunk to the bottom during the um, live stream so that, that last mouthful was really, really strong. So that's it, let me try playing around with the brightness for you guys. How's that? Yes, guys, with how large I paint, and I, I paint up to a full imperial sheet, um, making my own paints, particularly colours that um, I use a lot, it does work out cheaper. Anthony, what do you mean by them? Do you mean these two that you want mixing? Oh, thank you, Siam. I'm glad you like my handwriting. Yeah, they're all really, really blue. But let me tell the difference between this and Dan's blue. Dan's blue is so smooth. I don't know what magic he does with his paint. But his one is just so much smoother. And yeah, he's a magician. Is he around? Yeah, I'm I'm really liking the new one, the the more modern one. But they are quite similar. I think this one is just like a touch, like a hair um lighter blue than the more modern. Oh, I've got the sun. Let me put, pull the blind down. And then we play with the brightness again. There we are. Maybe too bright. I think that's as accurate as I can get with the colour. The pink and the blue. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. So, the ultramarine pink and then the new one. Yeah, let's do that. Wow, this is hardening up already.
uh, ever a <coughs> ever ask can I test this version? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. I have to, um, I, I have, I still have that cough. Oh, thank you, Lisa, for popping by. I really appreciate you joining us in the, um, live stream. So that's kind of the range you get with the ultramarine pink and the ultramarine blue. cough is sneaking up on me now that is really nice colors um it doesn't have the separation that moon glow does and my blind decided to just fall off yay um it's like a more well blended mix but the tone's definitely there and um, it's a really nice warm lavender color so it is really really nice actually really really nice i'm really glad i tried the ultramarine pink so somebody wanted this version. I'm going to try the crema first. Yeah, doesn't want to move much. Let's see if the Schmincke one wants to move. Schminke, of course, has ox gold in their binder. Yeah. You see that? That's the difference between having ox gold and not having ox gold. So if you, if you want like a Holbein type paint, you know, ones that will just stay where you put it, then something like crema or any other binder that doesn't have um ox gold is the way to go if on the other hand you like like more of the daniel smith colors and you like them having an expression of their own then make sure you have ox gold in your mix or i think you can get synthetic ox gold um off the top of my head winsor newton maybe has a synthetic ox gold so you can use that as well yeah, that really moves. It, um, both of them, I only touched the top. So. Any other questions? That's really interesting to compare because I haven't done that before. So thank you for suggesting that. I think the sun's going now. Honestly, I tell you, Scotland, I they, literally in the winter, I have to have both sunglasses and hats and gloves in my handbag at all times. Yeah, Cole uses um, synthetic ox gloves. By the way, hi Denise, I didn't get to say a proper hi to you. Thank you for popping by. Melina says that is a huge difference. Yeah, it is. It's a massive difference. And it just depends on what you want. Um, whether you want like a paint that stays put or paint that just wants to run when you put it in water. You are very welcome, Eva. Thank you very much for suggesting that I test that. So, yeah. Yeah. 
so that's it <laughs> that's it for today's live stream if there's no more questions thank you so much you guys like we've been on for two hours and 46 minutes thank you you guys are troopers um for sticking by and i really really appreciate um you guys joining in and you know spending this time with me i always really enjoy doing live stream with you guys it just i have so much fun um chatting to you guys and you guys are so knowledgeable and come up with some fantastic ideas so next week i promise i will fill the monster palette with um, paint and um then after that maybe i'll have the new crema order um delivered and then we can play with that maybe or i might think of something else who knows we just know that next week is going to be palette filling and then painting with the colors thank you so much to eve for always being like the most amazing moderator one can ask for and um thank you so much you guys for sharing your information as well and uh, i will speak to you very very soon bye